Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 10th of October. India lifts travel advisory for tourists in Jammu and Kashmir. Gotabaya promises a safer country if he wins Lankan presidential polls. And week-long Kulu Dashera festivities begin in northern India. And now for all the details. India's Northern Jammu and Kashmir administration has withdrawn the security advisory that it had issued in August this year for tourists to curtail their stay in the valley. It has offered necessary support and assistance to tourists visiting the region. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir has been reopened to tourists from Thursday, more than two months after the government has asked tourists and pilgrims to leave the province before it made the big announcement of ending the special status for Jammu and Kashmir. The order dated October 9 read the tourists desirous of undertaking visiting to the state shall be provided all necessary assistance and logistical support. The administration lifted the travel advisory following Governor Satyapal Malik's instructions earlier this week. Meanwhile, tourism players of the valley welcomed and appreciated the government decision to lift advisory on tourists. Tourism sector stakeholders expressed hope that they will see a boom in the sector during the upcoming tourist season. I understand that the government is a good step from the government. So, the people who are very hostile and especially the mindset here सारा दारमदार यहाँ के टूरिज्म पर है या हॉटेकल्चर पे है यही दो मेन चीजें जो है कश्मीर में जिससे यहाँ की मायशियत चलती है यहाँ की सरकार चलती है। The central government had on August 5 scrapped the provision of Article 370, which took away the special status of Jammu and Kashmir and bifurcated it into two union territories. It was on August 2nd that the administration had advised people visiting Amarnath pilgrimage site and tourists to curtail their stay in the valley immediately after the Indian Army said Pakistani terrorists are planning to disrupt the pilgrimage. Preparations are in full swing to welcome Chinese President Xi Jinping in India ahead of his two-day visit to the country. Xi will visit India on Friday for an informal summit with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi aimed at boosting bilateral ties. Preparations are in full swing to welcome Chinese President Xi Jinping in southern India ahead of his two-day visit to the country. Students in Chennai city of southern Tamil Nadu province on Thursday wore masks of Chinese President Xi Jinping and sat in the formation of his name as they welcomed him to their country. The Chinese leader will visit India on from October 11th to 12th for an informal summit with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He did three or four types of receptions today. The one is uh, 2000 students, they made a formation of the Chinese president name in their own language, Chinese language, Mandarin letters. And uh, we, yes, we are wearing masks. We are doing a uh, one program for the China uh, presidents who are coming to India in Mahabalipuram. And we are Tamilians, so we are proud to do this program. And we love China, we love India. Meanwhile, Mamallapuram town in Tamil Nadu, where the high level summit is scheduled to be held, was seen getting a facelift as part of the security arrangements for the event. She, during his tour, will also be visiting monuments and other heritage sites and will be attending cultural programs organized at the Shore Temple in Mamallapuram. Moving on, leader of Gilgit Baltistan Sabami Action Committee has raised concerns over the exploitation of local employees in the illegally occupied region. Activists have long blamed Pakistani authorities of denying the basic fundamental rights to the locals. Chairman of the Awami Action Committee of Gilgit Baltistan, Maulana Sultan Reis, has expressed his concern over the exploitation of employees in the illegally occupied region. 
while addressing a press conference recently, Rais said local domicile holders of Gilgit Baltistan have the first right to get government jobs in the region, but they are deprived of their rights. He said locals if given a government job are posted in other regions in Pakistan and people from other regions who are not even capable of being a clerk by education are appointed at the government departments in Gilgit Baltistan. Gilgit Baltistan ke local jo hamare domicile holder hain unke sath ye zulm zyadati hain aur sitam bala hai sitam ye कि ऐसे लोगों को यहां अपॉइंट की गई कि जिनका अगर एजुकेशन देखा जाए जिनका करेक्टर देखा जाए तो मैं नहीं समझता कि उनको कलरक भी अपॉइंट किया जा सके प्रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ गिलगित बल्तिस्तान हैव फॉर इयर्स बिन आस्किंग इस्लामाबाद टू आइडर सेट द इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन फ्री और ग्रांट देम राइट सिमिलर टू दोस एंजॉयड बाय अदर पाकिस्तानी सिटीजंस They allege that Pakistani authorities have done nothing except plundering their resources and the region has become backward due to Islamabad's draconian laws and policies. In news from Afghanistan, foreign offices including the US and UK embassies in Afghanistan have expressed their support to the country's independent election commission. They called for patience regarding September 28th poll results and said the commission should not be unduly pressured. As Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission has started filtering votes from the September 28th presidential election, the United States and UK embassies as well as international offices have called the election body to make sure that the valid and invalid votes are separated. The embassies also signal that the election body should not be unduly pressured and it is better to be right than fast. The remarks by the foreign offices in Kabul came amid reports of the commission being criticized by election observers over its failure to accelerate the process of transferring data from the biometric devices to the commission's main server. The election commission however said that it will meet the October 19th deadline for determining the preliminary results. The commission has so far managed to transfer data from over 22,000 biometric devices to its main server. Moving on, Sri Lanka is set to hold presidential poll on November 16th. Launching his campaign on Wednesday, SLPP's presidential candidate Gotabaya Rajapaksa promised a safer country if he wins. Sri Lanka Podu Jana Pera Munna or SLPP presidential candidate former defense secretary Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Wednesday held inaugural rally of his election campaign in Anuradhapura. Launching the campaign in Sri Lanka's ancient city Rajapaksa promised to ensure a safer country and said that the current government has destroyed the freedom of people visiting their religious places referring to attacks on churches Gotabaya told thousands of supporters of his brother former Sri Lankan president Mahindra Rajapaksa's SLPP that he would release all the war heroes in prisons for various unfound allegations in the November polls if he wins Rajpaksa's popularity has risen in recent months after it emerged that President Maithripala Sirisena's government failed to act on repeated intelligence warnings from India ahead of the Easter Sunday attacks. Meanwhile Sri Lanka Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe called for the victory of United National Front candidate Sajid Premadasa to continue the reform process carried out in the last 5 years through a transparent government. 52 year old Premadasa son of former president Rana Singhe Premadasa who was assassinated by a Tamil Tiger rebel suicide bomber in 1993 is popular among the rural poor. And he's from Bangladesh Scientists in Bangladesh have developed a method to make clean drinking water using algae. The team hopes water filters made from the algae could be an affordable means to prevent numerous potentially deadly waterborne infections. Researchers at the University of Dhaka have found that locally grown green algae can be used to create paper filters with pores small enough to trap bacteria and pathogens from dirty water to make it drinkable. 
The research was done in partnership with Sweden's Uppsala University, where the cellulose nanofibers from the species of green algae Pithophora was turned into filter paper and sent back to Dhaka for testing. The team hopes water filters made from algae could be an affordable means to prevent numerous potentially deadly waterborne infections. This pithophora was collected from different habitats of Bangladesh and cultured in the Botanical Garden, Department of Botany, University of Dhaka. Then we processed it and sent it to Sweden. They made a filter from pithophora and send it to us. This nanofilter is capable of removal of all types of bacteria and viruses which are pathogenic from contaminated waters. The researchers hope to develop devices that could use the algae filter to physically remove pathogens and provide a viable source of clean drinking water for Bangladesh's rapidly growing population. Members of a militant group accused of being involved in a planning to carry out terror attacks in India were produced in a court in northern Amritsar city on Thursday. The accused, who belong to a group reportedly backed by Pakistan, were arrested last month after a terror module was busted by the police. Police in India's northern Amritsar city produced nine accused belonging to a militant group reportedly backed by Pakistan at a regional court on Thursday. The accused belonging to the Khalistan Zindabad Force or KZF group, which is a part of six separatist movement, were arrested last month after a terror module was busted by the police, which it said was planning to carry out attacks in the country. Reportedly, the accused were receiving arms and ammunitions from Pakistan-controlled drones. केस ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 4 ਅਕਤੂਬਰ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੀ ਇਹ ਕੇਸ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਨੇ ਐਨ ਆਈ ਏ ਨੂੰ ਮਾਰ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਅੱਜ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਦਾ ਆਈਓਸੀ ਉਹਨੇ ਕਹਿ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਕੇਸ ਐਨ ਆਈ ਏ ਨੂੰ ਮਾਰਕ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਐਨ ਆਈ ਏ ਕੋਰਟ ਦੇ ਆਰਡਰ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਕੇਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 11 ਅਕਤੂਬਰ ਨੂੰ ਮੋਹਾਲੀ ਐਨ ਆਈ ਏ ਕੋਰਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏ Meanwhile search operation was underway in Firozpur district earlier this week after a suspicious flying object was spotted in the area Police suspects that weapons are delivered across the Indo-Pak border from Pakistan using drones launched by Pakistan's intelligence agency ISI and state-sponsored terrorist outfits working under its command. The celebrations of Hindu festival Dashera which marks the victory of good over evil are underway in the Indian hill town of Kullu. The week-long festivities begin in Kullu every year after the Dashera culminates in the rest of the country. The famous Kulu Dashera festivities are underway with traditional fervor in the hill town of Kulu in India's Himachal Pradesh province. The week-long festival began on Tuesday in Kulu with a colorful procession carrying idols of several Hindu deities. Dating back to the 17th century, the Kulu Dashera is unique as it begins when Dashera festivities culminate in the rest of India. Members of the former royal family of Kullu also performed the annual rituals and offered prayers to Hindu god and goddesses. जो विधिवत रूप से पूजा हुई इसको अस्त्र शस्त्र अशुभ पूजा करते हैं जब भी रण में जाना है तो ये पूजाएं होती है. Thousands of people from across the country and foreign tourists were also seen reveling in the colorful festival. Find this festival so interesting. Um it's absolutely beautiful. All of the color, all of the music. Uh it's it's amazing. The Shera marks a triumph of good over evil. It is regarded as the day when Hindu Lord Rama defeated demon king Ravana and rescued his abducted wife Sita. The annual event of Kulu Dashera will be celebrated till October 14th in the hill town. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at @sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.